Hello everyone and once again welcome back to my channel Server Gyan. My name is Dr. Lokendra Singh and within this video we are going to discuss about interview questions which are usually asked based on scenarios within interview of DevOps as well as AWS admin. So as we have already discussed about DevOps so let us discuss about AWS and the interview questions which are usually asked during interview. Okay, so first of all, there will be a question. Okay, tell us about yourself so you know that what you need to explain that what you are doing, where you are working, how long it's been, and uh, then after there will be a question like, okay, explain your day-to-day -day task or what is your daily routine. So these are the questions which are usually asked to the guys. So how do we start that? So first of all, you need to ensure that you are going to tell you tell only those things which you are performing. Or even if, if you are not performing, then you have quite good experience about that thing. For example, you start your day with uh, monitoring stuff that all the emails alert, whatever you have got, you need to check them. If there is any warning or if there is any critical service, so you need to fix that up. If that is related to the development or maybe related to production environment, you need to ensure that things are working fine. Then after, if there is a new environment creation, if the, any developer needs any assistance, if you need to provide any solution, so you need to work upon that particular task. So this is how you can explain your daily routine. Okay, then uh, what are the automation tools you have worked with? So this will be a question that the person would try to know that what all tools you have worked with or what all tools you know about. So based on that, definitely you will explain that whether you have worked with Ansible, Chef, Puppet or maybe Terraform. So any of the tool, whatever you will explain there, maybe Ansible, Chef, Puppet or Terraform, then there will be a couple of cross questions related to that particular tool. Maybe like what is Ansible, like uh, what is cookbook in uh, Chef, like how does Puppet work, so like how do we create master and certificate, master and slaves, master and uh, like uh, age, client certificate, how do we create, how do we authenticate new, use, new user agent with Puppet, if we need to upgrade Puppet version, how do we need to do that. If we need to send any force upgrade to all the clients, how do we perform that? Like with Terraform, like how do we create resources? How do we ensure that servers are created on different platforms? How do we integrate multiple platforms with Terraform? So these are the things a person can ask you. Okay. So next question is what are the difference between what is the what are the differences between application and network load balancer? So you will say the differences, and it could be a different question as well. Like how do you choose ELB for your infra? So if you need to load balance only HTTP and HTTPS traffic, then you are going to choose your network load, your application load balancer, because based on that you can implement multiple rules like uh, based on your uh, path, host, multiple different parameters, based on source, and obviously based on your specific requirement, you can have multiple rules placed on uh, application load balancer. In the same manner, if you need to do uh, like uh, network level load balancing, so you can use TCP, UDP or TLS protocols for the same. And if you are, if you want to migrate or if you want to like uh, balance your load based on these protocols, then you are going to select network load balancer. Moreover, you are going to get really high throughput and low latency when you are working with network load balancer. But you cannot place security group as well as you cannot place multiple rules like application load balancer with network load balancer so these, these are the main differences okay so next is like how to manage path based and host based routing with elb so yes there are certain conditions when you go and you create you insert rule within your uh, your uh, uh, load balancer so at that moment you can ensure it that uh, you can have multiple path based and host based routing within load balancer so there will be a question like how many rules can you implement so there is a limit of 100 you can have 100 rules per load balancer per listener. Per listener in the sense like if there are two listeners HTTP and HTTPS. So the combination of both will be calculated. It will not be like you can have 100 rules with HTTP and 100 uh, rules with HTTPS. So overall cumulative sum of both listeners will be counted. It means you can have only 100 rules per load balancer. And that is hard limit from the side of AWS as of today. Okay, next question will be like, uh, could be like, I'm not sure like only this question will be asked. So like, can we mount one EBS volume to multiple EC2 instances? So the answer is no, we cannot mount. Reason being, EBS is a service uh, based on availability zones. So if you create a uh, like EC2 machine within any availability zone, 
सो ओनली दोज वॉल्यूम्स विच आर क्रिएटेड विद इन दैट अवेलेबिलिटी जोन विल बी माउंटेड विद दैट इंस्टेंस मोर ओवर इफ यू हैव माउंटेड वन ई सी टू मशीन वन वॉल्यूम विद वन ई सी टू मशीन सो दैट विल नॉट बी माउंटेड विद अनदर वन अनटिल एन एन लेस यू अनमाउंटेड फ्रॉम देयर एंड यू ट्राई टू माउंट इट ऑन द द करंट इंस्टेंस ओके सो इट कुड बी सिनेरियो दैट द पर्सन इज ट्राइंग टू लाइक फिगर आउट दैट डू यू हैव एनी सॉल्यूशन फॉर दैट सो यस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन यू कैन इजीली से दैट वी कैन नॉट माउंट ई बी एस विद मल्टीपल ई सी टू इंस्टांसिस बट वी कैन माउंट ई एफ एस विद मल्टीपल इंस्टांसिस दैट इज द सिचुएशन वैन यू कैन पुट योर नॉलेज और यू कैन एक्सप्रेस योर थाट्स बेस्ड ऑन ई एफ एस ओके सो देन देर कुड बी सम अदर क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड टू एस थ्री लाइक वॉट इज एस थ्री वॉट इज वर्जनिंग इन एस थ्री सो लाइक लेट मी टेल यू वॉट इज एस थ्री एस थ्री मीन्स सिंपल स्टोरेज सर्विस देन देर कुड बी क्वेश्चन हाउ मेनी एस थ्री बकेट्स वी कैन वी क्रिएट सो बाई डिफॉल्ट वी कैन क्रिएट अप्रॉक्स हंड्रेड एस थ्री बकेट्स विद इन सिंगल अकाउंट दैट लिमिट कैन बी इंक्रीज बाई डिफॉल्ट वी कैन स्टोर टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी सिक्स टेरा बाई डेटा विद इन वन एस थ्री बकेट वी कैन होस्ट स्टेटिक वेबसाइट विद एस थ्री बकेट देन आफ्टर देर आर मल्टीपल स्टोरेज क्लासेज दैट इज स्टैंडर्ड स्टोरेज क्लास स्टैंडर्ड स्टोरेज क्लास आई ए इट मीन्स इन फ्रिक्वेंट एक्सेस रिड्यूज रिडेंडेंसी स्टोरेज एंड देन देर आर कपल ऑफ मोर क्लासेज यू कैन चेक दैट आउट सो वॉट इज वर्जनिंग इन एस थ्री सो वैन वी अपलोड अ फाइल मल्टीपल टाइम्स वैन डेटा इज चेंज बट द नेम ऑफ फाइल इज सेम सो एवरी टाइम इफ यू वॉन्ट टू वॉन्ट टू मैनेज द वर्जन ऑफ द फाइल you want to upload same uh, same file with the same name multiple times so obviously every time you will upload new, the new for new file with same name so obviously it will create versions for you but in that case you will have to pay for versions as well as your main file so that will be a thing you you will have to check that okay what are permissions and policy on s3 so obviously by default all the objects in s3 are private no one can access them but yes based on bucket policy you can have some permission that who can read what so uh, like uh, bucket access policy in fact you can assign cross account permissions as well on this particular and based on your uh, canonical id you can implement that so what is canonical id so whenever we have a root account and uh, one root account is provided with one canonical id so if we want to allow account a user to account b so we will have to use this canonical id so this can be found under iam rules i under iam section you can easily find it so what is cross region replication so cross region replication means that if you have a bucket and the uh, bucket contains some data if you want to my if you want to copy all the data which is being uploaded to bucket a to bucket b so you can enable cross region replication this can take place within single account within uh, among multiple regions or within different account and different regions so that is the particular feature which is known as cross region replication so uh, there could be another question like what are the dependencies or what are the requirement to enable cross region replication so answer is that versioning should be enabled in order to enable cross region replication versioning is mandatory so yes okay next question is what is default state of uh, security group it means when you create a security group so what is what are the rules up allowed uh, within a security group so by default no incoming traffic it is is allowed and all outgoing traffic is allowed when we create a security group okay so what is what is role of uh, nacl and sg where these are implemented so nacl means network acl this works per subnet basis and this is implemented on on the top of your subnets and when we talk about security group so this works along with ec2 uh, resources it means with instances with a specific resource like load balancer like reso like uh, rds like your ec2 instances wherein if there are 100 servers within a single subnet then obviously network will be working on the top of security group on the top of means if we have a hierarchy then first of all nacl will be there and after that security group so where these are implemented so as just i have explained so uh, nacl nacl works based on your subnets and security group works on, based on specific components okay so what tools do you use for ddos and other threat prevention so waf and shield these are tools which we can use to prevent these uh, things these uh, like these attacks like dos and and others 
So these are the things which we can use. Moreover, what is WAF? WAF means Web Application Firewall, wherein you can have multiple rules implemented, like what type of traffic should be allowed, how many hits you can accept from there. Uh, you can have some rules for cross-site scripting and, and other things. In the same manner, shield works. What is IAM? IAM means Identity and Access Management. So what is user, what is group, and what is role? So you should know this thing. Then after, how do you write custom policies for user and, uh, users and roles? So I have already created a couple of videos on, the, on these topics. So uh, you can check, the, check this thing on channel. Okay. Uh, how will you enable MFA and what is use of it? So MFA means multi-factor authentication. When we allow a user to log into our account, and that moment we want that user should be able to log in. But not only password is enough, we want that there should be an uh, like one additional layer of authentication, then we enable MFA. So either we can enable virtual MFA, like we can have Google Authenticator or maybe different apps which supports AW, which are supported by AWS, or we can have a physical device, physical MFA device. So what is use of it? So MFA is used for authentication. It means an additional, it provides an additional layer of security to our uh, uh, AWS account. Now these are the questions which you will have to figure out because these are really lengthy and uh, I would like you to explore it. If you have any questions, so definitely I would love to explore these things as well. So what is difference between TCP and UDP? Then after how does TCP handshake work? Or uh, this could be like, like what is what is TCP 3V handshake? Now then after what is, uh, HTT, how does HTTPS handshake work? Or there could be one another question, what is pre-master key? This, this question could be like, what is pre-master key? Uh, this could also be a question because that is the concept of HTTPS handshake. Then after, how does DNS resolution work? So a person can ask you like when we type in www.servergan.com in browser, so how do we uh, like, how does it happen or what are the things which goes on in backend? So like uh, the person would like to know about your uh, proxy, your uh, local DNS, then after your ISP DNS, maybe Google DNS, then after root server, then after your uh, the particular domain registrar. So these are the concepts which you should know. Then after a person can ask you like what are the default ports of DS, DS, like DSCP, DNS, RDS, maybe MySQL, Postgres, Redis, maybe SSH, FTP and others. So there is a particular file which is known as slash etc slash services. So this is the file with, which is found within Linux boxes. So you can easily cat or maybe use, you can use vi command to read the port and the services. Okay, so next question is like, what are the tools you use for CI/CD? So obviously the tool is uh, maybe that could be my maybe like Jenkins, maybe Bamboo, maybe Circle CI, or maybe any other one. So then after the particular person can ask you like, if you say okay, I am using Jenkins, so the person can ask you like, what is Jenkins pipeline? What are the types of Jenkins pipeline? Then after uh, how do you integrate Git with Jenkins? What is artifact repository? The person can ask you. How do you download artifact from at artifact repository? Okay, there could be a question like how do you deploy release on prod or maybe on a stage or maybe on development environment. So the answer would be like either you can do this by using Jenkins or by using Ansible. Okay, if you say Ansible, then there will be further more questions. Okay, how do you make sure that services are started and also these could be like couple of questions related to this topic. So when you are going to answer these things, so you need to have understanding of Ansible as well as Jenkins. Okay, so there is one more question like uh, how do you ensure that same issue does not come again into production? So uh, for ensuring it like you will have to dig that and uh, you will have to figure out the RCA of an issue. So there will be a question like we, 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 we try to figure out RCA. So there will be an additional question like how do you figure out RCA or how do you find out RCA of an issue? So you, will, you should know like what is RCA. So uh, you need to figure out like what is an event, like how did it happen, can it be reproduced and if it can be re reproduced then how would you prevent it, uh, what could be done that it should not happen again, uh, whether you want to go for low test and all. So these are the questions which can be asked to a person during interview. So this is first part of the interview question of AWS admin and all. So I shall be sharing a couple of more uh, interview questions related to this topic. So 
this is it for this video guys thank you so very much for watching have a good time and happy learning from server gyan if you have any further questions so please do let me know i shall be happy to assist you on that have a good time happy learning please do like share and subscribe to my channel have a good time thank you very much have a good time